Tide and we're Metro staff have teamed up to stop known criminals using the service. A film director is planning to do another shoot in the northeast despite criticism of his latest venture. Drunken butterflies followed the highs and lows of five young women as they went out on nights out in Newcastle. But Gary Sykes says it was a true reflection of life and his sister region has more to offer. Basically, this bloke made a film about me and some of my pals a few year back. He's not here, not really sure why. He's not a bunch of divvies anyway, but you may as well watch it now. So, enjoy the film. Where's he been? I haven't applied to us. I was waiting to speak to him. About what? No, 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 come on. I was going to talk to you by yourself. Talk to us about what? Hmm? Don't play games. Hmm? I'm not playing, playing games, games you're the one playing fucking games. It was a mistake, and I'm sorry, people make mistakes. I'm sure you've made Yeah, I know, yeah. I know people make mistakes. You're meant to be my friend. <laughs> you're meant to be my friend. Friends don't do this, you don't know Friends don't do what you've fucking done, never mind friends don't do this. Tracy, I'm sorry. You're sorry? He's laughing at you. No. Got off my face. Your brother's dickhead. He's been a dickhead. He's been ignoring his He's Tracy. Been a dickhead. What was I meant to think? <laughs> what was I meant to think? <laughs> oh, no, that. Tyler. This is a question for you first, Gary. How did this feature originate? Where, how did this all get started? Uh, well, thank you. I'm really glad that you enjoyed it, and I hope everybody else did too. Uh, this got started when I kind of binge watched Made in Chelsea. <laughs> uh, not, not, not my choice, really, but I uh, wanted to know what would happen if you tried to make like a, a feature length film with lots of other elements in it out of that kind of process. And then, obviously, with growing up around here, um, I always wanted to make something around here, kind of inspired by bits and pieces of my own teen years here. Now we're here. And uh, how did you get this cast together? We put flyers all around Newcastle, we advertised on Tumblr and Twitter, we held auditions at the Star and Shadow, from which we selected this fine group of performers. And uh, I've got a question for all of you, so we can then uh, ask the mic along. What have you all worked on before, and, and how many of you are totally new to this kind of thing? i done a lot of like amateur stuff. I've done acting and singing. <laughs> I used to go to dancing class when I was a kid just so I could do some acting. And then, inexplicably, while hung over on the green one day, someone came up to me with a flyer and said, do you fancy auditioning for a film? And I was like, yeah, why not? So I've probably been more stage suited my whole life and um, done more stage work than actually screen work. Um, I've been like an extra in different various things, but this was my main sort of on screen work that I've really done. I was like stalking on Twitter and things. I was like, what this? And then I went for an audition and yeah, got my first speech thing. <laughs> I've never really done acting before and it's safe to say I'll probably never do it again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a filmmaker, I guess I've been filmmaking, but for anyone who's a filmmaker out there in the audience, the best thing to do is acting because that's how you actually learn on set how everything really works. Gary actually seen me first on a porno, I think it was. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the question again? <laughs> what had you done before? Oh yeah, I um my things like TV and film and stuff like that. <coughs> I like all this subtle sort of I'm Jack, right there. I can see there. Um all that sort of thing. I'm really rubbish at some days, so I'm gonna pass it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I've done a little bit of theatre work, um, but I mainly just do card tricks and magic tricks. Um, I work at restaurants doing magic and things. Um, I just kind of came across this by accident, really. It was someone shared it on Facebook. Um, I just read the, um, the little dialogue that was given on the Tumblr, I think it was, and it looked really, really interesting. I thought I really wanted to be a part of this. Um, so I went along, did the audition, and did a card trick, and it worked. <laughs> that was fine. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the story. Because I know um, from, from, from doing a bit of research into this, Gary, um, you, you had the idea for the story, but I right, think that it was, it was quite improvised to do the shoot as well. Yeah, so we started out with a 20 page outline, um, which was by and large based on things that had happened to me as a teenager. But we didn't really want to make a film about like being a teenager in Newcastle in the 90s, because I think there's enough retro teen movies about like guys growing up. Um, so we wanted it to be female focused, and we wanted it to be very contemporary. And so there was 
from the outline, there was so much room written into it for things to change and develop, and for the cast's own experiences and ideas to be to come into it. Um, some of which came out through workshops, some of which came out through just discussions that we had while we were filming it. But we ended up with something that, I mean, some of it was the same as what it was in the outline, but a lot of it ended up very different. And, uh, another question for the, for the cast, um, how close does the end result sort of skew towards sort of maybe elements of your lives? Autobiographical or...? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I grew up on quite a um, at the very end quite a rough estate. I think it was the biggest council estate in Europe at one stage. Uh, Liam Lane and Kate said, um, and I have been better on Google about eight times or something like that. Um, not in one day, obviously. I mean, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 elements. You can see people I went to school with, wow, they're just, I mean, I'm 22 now, and they're exactly the same as they were when they were 16. I mean, I did a scene where it was like, um, me and uh, Harry's, it was, um, in the pub, and it was about growing up, and like sometimes people actually, like you can't. Me mum, just drinks, drinks, drinks. I mean, what's it to look forward to? So I'm sitting in a bar, having a fucking pint by myself. Magic. Billy no mate, I'm right. <laughs> Never thought I'd end up like this. That's what happens, wasn't it? I'm not being like what you're around, will you? You're only young. There's no such thing as young in this place, man. Everyone's the same age. Go nowhere. I think everyone's been, always knows people who've been through the stage of growing up and you want to get in with the popular people or whatever, so you're willing to sacrifice things. So I like kind of sympathise in that way because everyone, yeah, when I was in school, I was kind of the glee nerd or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so like I always used to try and talk to the popular people and things, but that's kind of the scenarios. Differences, don't like cheating. So yeah. <laughs> Um, I think in terms of how my life is similar to Sarah's, it's not. I'm like the complete opposite as to what you see on the screen. Well, that's what people say anyway. But, um, for me, it was kind of just about being the opposite of what I am. So when I read, you know, the characters and what they were meant to be like, how they behave, I was really attracted to Sarah's. Well, actually, I was attracted to Tracy straight away. Um, and auditioned for Tracy originally because she was meant to be the bad girl. Um, but then got cast as Sarah, he was actually a little bit more insane. <laughs> um, and for me it was just about playing someone who is just totally the opposite as to what I am. So he's not afraid to shout out and voice their opinions and stuff. Whereas I think me growing up in school I was always very quiet and kind of bullied and stuff. And didn't know how to speak back and fight back. Whereas Sarah was the complete opposite of that. Um, I feel like Nikki is not the person who I was as a teenager, it's more who I'd actually kind of wanted to be. I wanted to be like the, the punk girl, but I wasn't very good at it. I was more just quite like on the outskirts of everything. It's quite weird because in the end, after talking, I think that me and Lucy had very similar childhoods and we ended up playing like the complete opposite characters to each other, which was quite interesting to play. But yeah, um, I feel like Nikki was like more the way that I play it's kind of like a caricature of who I kind of wanted to be but with the insecurities all quite laid out there like on screen just to make it interesting. Okay, and uh, just a question for you two, um, how hard was it playing that scene in the bathroom at the end? It was pretty, <laughs> well, pretty intense. <laughs> um, it was pretty intense, I mean we'd rehearsed it quite a lot yeah. clearly for safety reasons um, for me it was difficult because I got so endorsed in Sarah, in the character that I was playing, um, that the, the line between me and Sarah became very, very, very blurred. So when I came off set, I was still really angry and still like shaking, and, oh my god, I want to kill someone. Um, but I kind of, I was alright, was that? Yeah. I was alright. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best eight takes of my life. <laughs> you wouldn't have made it anyway. The real world's not built for little girls like you. Like all of them out there, bitches and bubbles, already too far gone. Tracy fucking Bell, man. What a joke. No clue what's coming. 
and none of these do. They would have swallowed you whole with the rest of them. Weak little slags, picked off like flies. Kids forever. Not me though. I was never one of you. go off and have a little bit of a cry yeah. afterwards because <laughs> when you're in that bathroom you can't you can kind of see it's absolutely tiny mm. which only added to how uncomfortable it was but the thing that we cared about before we went in and had a hug before we did it because we knew that was when we were going to do it and then we get on we got on really well all the way through so it wasn't thank god it was her like doing it because at least then I knew we could like chat about it and everything and it all worked out really well and it looked good it's still really uncomfortable to watch, but yeah, quite. it looks alright. Um, last question for you, Carrie. Um, it, I know it's really hard for someone who's made not only made a film, but also is trying to get it out on the road as well. And, and we have a lot of screenings of films who, where filmmakers haven't got a film in conventional distribution. Um, and I know it's a right struggle. I'm just wondering how, how you're getting this out and about and, and putting it in front of people like, sort of like you have done tonight. And how that sort of has been going for you? Yeah, um, well, it's it's kind of a. It feels like it's a bit all over the place at the minute. Like you can uh, rent it or download it via the website. Cinema showings are my favourite because like, I used to come to the Tyneside all the time as a teenager, and this is like very surreal. Um, I owe a huge thanks to the Tyneside and yourself and Chris for making this all happen. Uh, we have another screening in Edinburgh tomorrow, and then we have a screening in New York on Saturday. <laughs> it's great. Which is brilliant, well done. Um, so that's my question. So has anyone got a question for any of these fine folks at the front here? Um, what was the reason for making this film at this point in time and did you accomplish everything you set out to achieve? I guess the reason for making it at this point in time was, I mean, there are various issues within the film which are very contemporary, <coughs> especially the feminist angle to it. A small amount of money was there and the opportunity was there and everything kind of came together to tell this story now. In terms of did we achieve everything we wanted to, it was always an experiment from the very start and we almost wanted to see where it would take us and in that sense then it's definitely been quite a journey. Lucy, are you Lucy or are you Sarah tonight? Uh, no, I'm Lucy and I'm, I'm always Lucy and I'm Sarah. <coughs> was that a reflection of real nightlife in Newcastle? On some levels, yeah. Um, I think it's kind of the very extreme as to what... Uh, the film's meant to sort of portray what females in particular in this day and age are sort of exposed to in terms of like nightlife and the way they're expected to behave and the way they feel pressured to behave. Um, I think this film shows the extreme end of it, which, I mean, it's not that bad, is it? No, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's that extreme. Um, I think like one of the important things about it is that it's not nightlife out on the town, it's a house party. And I think the fact that it was a combination of house parties that I've been to and things that the director cast have all been to, I mean, obviously they're <coughs> concentrated in one event because it's a, it's a film. Um, I think those elements of it are all reflective of things that would actually happen. I mean, I know there's at least one person in the audience who has been at a house party which became a siege 